AAMG. Your choice, your health, our mission. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to AAMG YouTube channel. My name is Esther, your host and the source of trusted information. Uh, we are very lucky to invite our AMG pulmonologist, Dr. Fred Holm. He is the medical director of the ICU and the vice chief of staff in the Chinese hospital. Welcome, Dr. Holm. Thank you, Esther. Very happy to be here. So we, we see a letter from our uh, viewer and uh, she is a caregiver and who have a, um, a grandmother currently have uh, COPD and she's very concerned because during this COVID-19 she had read it from um, CDC saying that people with um, COPD they are at a very high risk um, during this pandemic and uh, currently she's taking medication but is not seem doing really well she's wondering where or not the grandmother is taking the right medication or she is using um, the inhaler correctly could you actually address that, please? Yeah, those are very important questions. Um, I get referrals to my office because patients are on medication, but maybe it's not the right medication. Maybe they're not using it properly. So I will have my secretary insist that the patient comes to my office for the first time with their medications. A lot of times they have a big bag and there's like 12 medications. I pick out all the inhalers that they're on, and then I have them show me to, to make sure they're using it properly. Because so many, many of the patients are not doing well, just for the simple reason that they're not using it properly. So I want to spend a few minutes to just go over some of the more common inhalers that are in the market and the proper way to use them. There are two basic types. There's rescue medications, which give you fast relief. Uh, they use when you're having what we call it, an exacerbation. And there's controller medications. So I'll explain which ones will, will do which. The very first one that came out in the market over 30 years ago looks like this and different colors called a meter dose inhaler or MDI. It takes a few steps to use it right though. And basically the first step is to shake it. And then for each of these, you have to have the patient exhale. <clears throat> a lot of them can't do that. They want you to exhale to empty out your lungs and then spray it. Take a deep breath and then hold your breath for 10 seconds if you can. 10 seconds to let the medicine go deep into your lungs and to work. If the patient breathes out right away, then you then have 10 seconds for the medicine to go into your lungs. So it does take a few steps to use it right. Many patients will forget to shake it or they may spray it to the side or they won't empty their lungs or maybe they can't take the deep breath. So. It's not that easy for some patients, especially the older ones. And for ones to make sure that they can use it more properly, you can also prescribe this spacer device. And uh, this way it ensures that you can get more medicine into your lungs. So there's a hole here. You put the inhaler into the hole. Now, instead of putting the inhaler in your mouth, you put this device in your mouth. <clears throat> you still have to shake it. Empty out. Now this you can put in your mouth. Take a deep breath. So when you spray, the medicine goes into the chamber and you breathe it in. You heard a little whistle. That means I did it too fast. You see, if you breathe too fast, you get a whistle. That means the patient breathed too fast. You have to breathe more slowly to do it properly. When you breathe more slowly, then the medicine can go into your lungs. See, that time there was no whistle, so you breathe slowly, then the, medic the medicine, instead of breathing to the back of your throat, it can go deep into your lungs. So this is a little uh, device that helps make sure that you don't spray it around the room and it makes it that you get more medicine for your money because you're spraying it into the spacer and then you can breathe it in. So that kind of helps. A few years ago, another company made it easier for these inhalers. Almost looks the same, but this is called a respirator click because it makes a click. So you don't have to shake it. All you have to do is open it until it clicks and you put it in your mouth, empty your lungs. So 
So then you close it. So only two steps. So much easier. And um, there's only one company that makes this, but you can see how much easier it is. You don't have to carry this around. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to um, worry about spraying it around. Just put it straight in your mouth. So this rest per clip. Open. Whatever speed you want and close. So easy to use. These are for rescue. Then a few years ago, this device came out. It has one for rescue, fast relief, and also one for control. And so there's different medications in this one. It's called a Respimat. When it first came out, I didn't, it took a while to learn how to use it. So if I had trouble, then you will know that your patients may have trouble too. So I have them bring it in to make sure they're using it right because it takes several steps. So the, there are th at least three steps, the T-O-P, T for turn, you can turn this plastic thing, O for open, you can open like this. There's another thing here, you don't open there. There's a little notch here, you open from there. And then P for press, this little gray thing, a button that you push. When you push, then the medicine comes out. You can see the spray. So of course you want that in your mouth. So I'll close it again. T for turn, O for open, and P, press into your mouth. <sighs> Empty out. I didn't take a deep breath because I was going to cough. That's one of the things people might have. They may actually cough from doing this. I was about to cough. But um, again, three steps. And it gives a nice spray. Uh, one of the side effects of these inhalers it actually can cause a cough. But uh, this nice spray gives you a nice jet and you don't have to take a necessary real deep breath to get the medicine. One disadvantage of this is that you have to breathe deep enough to get the medicine to your lungs. This one, it just sprays out so that you don't have to worry about getting enough um, force to breathe in. So these are devices that are used for fast relief. I'm going to show you some others that are for control. There's one that's called a discus. Again, at this you have to have enough force to breathe it in to work. So pretty easy to use. You put your thumb here, open it. Then you push this, click it. And there's a little mouthpiece here. Breathe it in, 10 seconds. But you have to, again, have enough force, enough strength to breathe it in to get the medicine deep into your lungs. Many patients can't do that, so you have to watch them do it to make sure they're breathing it right. I've seen some patients just go, that's nothing, you don't get anything, you just get it in your mouth. You have to really take a deep breath. Memory, our people with COPD are not that strong, and they may not be strong enough to breathe that deep. If they can't breathe that deeply, you might need to use one of the other devices instead. But it's pretty simple to use if you use it, if you can have enough energy to breathe it in, enough force. So you can open here, click it, breathe in. Pretty easy. The same company made, made it even easier, and this is called Ellipta. So it, it's the easiest device out there, also for control. All you have to do is just open and breathe. Hold for 10 seconds and let it out and then close it. So actually just two steps. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to, you don't have to use a spacer or anything. Just open and breathe. Very easy. If you have enough force to breathe it in. So for control. I wanted to show you one that's an older one. Uh, it's being phased out because it's a little bit more complicated. It takes more steps. It's this hand inhaler. Only one company makes it. It's being phased out because it's pretty complicated to use. Uh, I'll show you how many steps are involved. And it took me a while just to, to get the hang of it too. So push the button, open it. And then you have this mouthpiece, you have to open that. Then there's this capsule here. It came in this packet. So you have to open this packet, get the capsule here. The capsule goes into this hole here so it snaps. Some patients are not strong to snap it. So now you've got the capsule in place. You have to push the button again to poke a hole in that capsule. Now it's finally ready to use. Now you can put it in your mouth. 
breathe it in. So now you're finished, but now you have to go through all the steps to empty it. So we have to open it again, toss the capsule out, throw the capsule away, and now you can finally close it. So I lost count, but that's about nine steps. So it takes too many steps. Uh, the only nice thing is that it's once a day, but it's many steps. You have to get used to using it. This is being phased out and it's being replaced by this, which instead of nine steps, this is only four steps. So also, uh, this is available in the past for control. So we talked about fast relief rescue medications that works within minutes, lasts about four to six hours. Uh, that's for fast relief rescue. Then you have other medications for control. Uh, this one, you have to use it twice a day. Uh, this one is only once a day. And the controller ones are nice because they're more convenient. You just use it once a day. But they don't help you immediately. For immediate relief, you need to use one of the other fast, faster inhalers, uh, such as these, for fast relief. And in terms of the types of medications, there are steroids and they're called bronchodilators. Bronchodilators open up your bronchial tubes so you can get more air in and out. There are bronchodilators that work up here and there are bronchodilators that work down here, two different kinds. Some companies make both into one device. Um, one of them is like this, two in one. Then you have the steroid inhalers. So that's three different types. Bronchodilator here, here, and then steroids. And the steroids are for control, not for fast relief. And um, the company that makes this also makes it as a uh, combination bronchodilator and steroid. The company that makes this lipta can have it as, in all three, all three in one. You can that. They make one with one, they make one with two, they make one with three. So it's very confusing, and if the patient's confused, they may be using it incorrectly, they may be using too much of the medicine. Um, if you, I forgot to mention, if you use too much of these inhalers, I ask if they have problems with tremors or fast heartbeat, palpitations. Um, those are some of the effects that, even with regular dosing, they might have those side effects. I ask about that. If you have steroids, I make sure that they gargle and spit with water because the steroid inhalers can cause something called an infection called thrush, which are little white spots in your tongue or your throat. And that can be from the steroid inhalers. So I tell them to gargle with water and spit uh, to prevent that. So a lot of things to go over. It be quite, can be quite confusing, uh, but it's good to have the patient show how they're using it. I sometimes spend several minutes to teach them and have them come back next time and show me again as if they're using it properly and they're still not well, maybe it's not the right medication, maybe they need more medication. So that can take several minutes, but it's very, very important because it could be as simple as doing that. You can't just write the prescription and just hand it to them. You have to make sure that you teach them right, have them show me that they're using it right, then I can be um, more relieved that they're using it properly. Mm, that's, that's very good. Thank you so much for your explanation. Oh, sure. For more information on other health topics, please visit the AAMG Health Education website. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe to our channel for more related content.